I beg pardon, miss, but uh, do you happen to have any material at all dealing with the... If you please. Huh? What's that? Will you please lower your voice? But I... I... And then you might read the sign over there. Or shall I read it for you? Absolute quiet required in this library. My, but you read beautifully. But I, I wonder Will if... you please lower your voice? Oh, oh, sure. I, I, I mean, oh, sure, sure. I'll be more than happy to help you. But you simply can't disturb the others here in the library. I see. Well, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, excuse me, everyone. I didn't mean to disturb you, Will folks. You please, please be quiet. Well, good heavens, ma'am. I, I just wanted to apologize. That's quite unnecessary. Now... May I help you? Well, I hope you can. I'm looking for some literature on hydrokinetics. Um, don't suppose a hick library like this would have anything like that, though. You're a stranger in Jackson City, aren't you? That's right. Uh, how did you know? I know most of the people in town. And besides, folks who live here never refer to the town as having a hick library. Oh, now look. No offense intended. But after all, I, I don't expect too much from a two-before place that probably doesn't have much more to offer than the encyclopedia and a, and a couple of copies of the Rover Boys. You said you wished to see something on hydrokinetics. Uh, uh, that's right. Um, hydrokinetics is a branch of kinetics which relates to liquids. Uh, you see, kinetics is the branch of dynamics Do that... you wish to read Kendall, <clears throat> Johnson, Abernathy, or Sandine on the subject? What? What's that? I said which author do you wish to consult? Those four seem to be the authorities, but some engineers like Alexander and Bowen. Well, look here. Are you serious? Serious? Uh, about having books by Johnson and, and Kendall and Sandine and Abernathy on the theory of hydrokinetics. Will you follow me, please? Yes, certainly. Let me turn on that light if you wish. It's a little dark in here today. Uh, yes, all right. I think you'll find these quite up to date. I'm sorry that one of the Alexander volumes is out, but it should be back tomorrow. Oh, quite all right. Uh, it's Kendall I'm really after. Uh, here we are. This one. That was printed sometime last year, I believe. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, Kendall is propounding a new theory on hydraulics. I read it when I was in New York. I'm glad you didn't have to go back into the city to find what you wanted. No, I... Oh, look here... I owe you another apology, don't I? No, please, don't bother. Oh, but it's no bother. You may use any of the tables over there. Yes, but I, I'd like You'll to... find the one with the window quite good. Hmm. Sensitive. Cute, too. Yeah, darn cute. Yeah, well. Well, let's see. Kendall says... When an ounce of plain lubricating oil is introduced into... Hmm, wonder what her name is. First one, I mean. Nameplate on the desk says, uh, Miss Marshall. Well, that's interesting. Miss Marshall. <laughs> oh, well. Well, as I remember reading about it three months ago, Kendall says that if you introduce... One ounce of common lubricating oil into a cylinder two inches in diameter and four inches in height. <clears throat> Pretty girl. Wonder why I can't get her off my mind. Wonder where she lives. Oh, confound it. Well, then, according to Kendall, if an ultraviolet ray is permitted to cross the cylinder... At the time pressure is applied to the top, the result will... I wonder what a good-looking girl like her is doing in Jackson City. She's smart, too. I just mentioned hydrokinetics. She reeled off the four top authorities like she was a student on the subject. 
I wonder what she's doing tonight. Well, hang it all up. I say, uh, Miss Marshall. Oh, uh, I say, Miss Marshall. Yes, what is uh, it? Would it be possible for me to check this book out? I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid not. Well, it's really quite important. I'm an inventor, and I, I'm just on the verge of a very important discovery. I simply must have this book to use. I'm sorry. Perhaps you should buy a copy. Oh, I've tried that. Everywhere in town. There's none I can get a hold of. You could have one sent out from New York. I can't wait that long. I have to work on this thing while it's running through my head. It's very important. I might lose the whole idea by the time a copy came out of New York. I'm sorry. It's quite against the rules to permit anyone to take out a book without a library card. Well, suppose I take a card. Uh, how much? Oh, there's no charge, but you must have a property owner sign your application. Property owner? Application? Yes. Someone who can pay for the book in the event that it's lost and who's willing to personally guarantee your honesty must sign your application. Then your card will be ready within 48 hours. Oh, now look. That's worse yet. I'm sorry. This isn't any way to treat a Jackson City guest, you know. I'd like to help you. Really, I would. Would you? Really? Yes, I... I would, but... I can't break the rule. Now, wait a minute. I've got it. Yes? Yes. Your place. What? Uh, your place, your your home, uh, wherever you live. You mean... I mean you can take the book out yourself. You take it home, then I'll come by tonight and use it there. That's not very clever, Mr... Mr. Whoever you are. Uh, Chase, Adam Chase. And not very original either. Well, there aren't any new ideas. At least give me credit for picking one that's not too bad. <laughs> are you serious about the book? A word of honor, ma'am. I need that book right now, like anything. Seriously? Seriously. Then I... I just might be able to help you. Would you really? I might. Uh, tell me, can you take dictation? A little. Ah, good. You can help me. Uh, that is, if you'd like to. I might. I'll be glad to pay you. <laughs> well, we'll see. You'll do it? You'll take the book home and let me study it there? Yes, I'll, I'll take it home. Ah, good. Uh, where do you live? You won't have any trouble finding me. Just ask anyone for Cicely Marshall. Did you say uh, Cicely Marshall? Yes. What about it? <laughs> well, nothing. I, I, I just like it. it. It happens to be one of my favorite names. Um, what time? Tonight? Uh-huh. Oh, any time after 7.30. Good. How 7.32? <laughs> you better go now. We're beginning to disturb the folks who are trying to study. Yeah. All right. See you tonight. Now, just a minute. Yes? I've got to consult Kendall again. Hold on there a second. <laughs> Do you really think this invention will prove itself? Well, I'm not exactly an expert, but the idea seems sound. Wait a minute now. Let's see. Oh, yes. Here. Find it? Uh-huh. Now, will you take this down? Mm-hmm. Kendall, volume one, page 74. It has been my observation that hydraulic reaction often can be obtained through the use of a common water tumbler immersed in H2O. Uh, that's water. <laughs> oh, confound it. There I go again, treating you like a child. You probably know more about this entire subject than I do without my explaining chemical symbols. <laughs> Don't you think we'd better call it a night? No, it's early. It's 1 a.m. No, it couldn't be. <laughs> well, it is, though, see? Oh, brother. I'll bet I'm popular around this place from now on. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I really enjoyed it. Mister, you were serious there in the library, weren't yes, you? Yes, rather. I don't mind saying my complete future is probably tied up in this thing right now. If it's what I think it's going to be, I'm due to make a fortune out of it. I hope you do. Well, thanks. Uh, why? Oh, I like to know people who are successful. Besides, my father was an inventor. Was he really? Yes. He was a brilliant man. 
He had an invention. I, I never did quite understand what it was. It was before he was married. Someone filed for the patents just a few hours before he did. And he lost out. Someone stole his invention? No. No, it was just a coincidence. But my father was never the same after that. Something happened. I don't know what. I, I remember hearing my family talk about it in whispers when I was just an infant. Is he still alive? No. No, he's been gone three years. Oh, I'm sorry. He was a fine man. Grand, but he, he never got over that whatever it was that happened to him long before I was born. You you mean there was something more than just the loss of the invention patents? Yes. Something that was, I think, even more tragic. I've never even been able to guess what it was. Maybe it's better than you don't know. Yes, maybe so. Well, really, I, I should go. It's late. Is there much more to do? Well, yes. I, I have to finish these papers before I can have the model of the invention built. Oh, could I help you more? Would you? I'd love to, really. Tomorrow night? Can you wait that long? Oh, well, no, I can't, but <laughs> I will. <laughs> There we are. All finished. Good. Well, now the model's next. How long do you think it will take to build it? Well, at least two weeks. We've been on these papers longer than I thought we'd be. Almost 30 days. I really don't know what I've, I've done without you. Oh, I've enjoyed it. Oh, we can relax now till the model's built. Then I'll have to go to Washington. Uh, what time is it? Oh, it's early. Nine o'clock. Oh, good. Time enough to catch the last show. Uh, uh, that is, if you'd like to go out with me. Like to? I can't think of anything I'd like better. Wood! Oh, Wood! Your train's leaving, Adam. I'll be back with those patents. You will come back? You try to stop me. Oh, goodbye, darling. Cecily! Yes, Adam? Uh... Will you marry me when I come back? What? I said, will you marry me? No. When I come back? Oh, yes. Uh, will you ride? Just as soon as I get to Washington. Bye. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. To my diary, January the 17th. It has been five days since Adam went to Washington. I'll never forget the unromantic but lovable way he asked me to marry him. Standing on the steps of the moving train. Shouting the question at me above the noise of the engine. How I loved him at that moment. How I love him now. But why? Why, oh, why hasn't he written? Five days and not a word from Adam yet. Word has just been received, ladies and gentlemen, that the crack limited from Washington nearing Jackson City less than an hour ago was held up and robbed by unidentified gangsters. The train was flagged down by two men who pretended their car had stalled on the track. The engineer and fireman were shot and killed. All passengers were held at gunpoint, and the mail car was entered and robbed. This train robbery will remind old-timers of the historic and dramatic train robbery on almost the same spot some 50 years ago. Well, to be exact, 53 years ago, January the 17th. There is no indication as to the identification of today's bandits, but it is believed police have found a vital clue. I want to send this wire to Mr. Adam Chase, Esther Arms Hotel, Washington. Yes. Darling, have not heard from you. Worried. 
I love you. Sicily. Hello. Hello. Yes, operator, this is a party calling Washington. Yes, I'm calling Mr. Adam Chase. That's right, at the Esther Arms Hotel. Oh, you have a hotel? Hello? What's that? Checked out. Two weeks ago. Oh. No, thank you. Just cancel the call. To my diary, April the 17th. It has been three months and five days since I last saw Adam Chase. He promised to write immediately from Washington three months ago. He seems to have dropped out of the world. I can't locate him any place. I've just returned from ten days in Washington. Searching. I found nothing. Yes? Come in. Adam. I... I had to come back. Oh, darling. Darling, what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. You look so ill, so thin. I guess I shouldn't be here. Since you didn't want me. Didn't, but I... didn't want you? Didn't want you? Oh, my darling, what makes you say anything like that? I wrote you ab about the invention. I didn't get your letter. I haven't heard a word from you. I told you what happened, that I was ruined. My darling. That if you loved me, you'd come to Washington and we'd make it some way. I didn't get it, Adam. I tell you, I didn't get that letter. I waited. You didn't answer. You didn't come. You didn't want to come. Darling, will you listen to me? I didn't get that letter. What? What, Cecily? I didn't get that letter. You didn't get it? No. No, I, I waited and waited. I wired you, phoned. Well, I just got back from looking from one end of Washington to another for you. Cecily. Oh, my darling, my darling. I was too late. Just 24 hours too late. Adam. Someone else, someone from California, had just filed for the patents to the same invention. Oh, sweetheart. I was just a few hours too late. Oh, but the invention isn't everything. I wrote to you. I told you what happened. I asked you to come to Washington to marry me. I'd have come in a minute. And I thought, no, the thousands of things I thought. Oh, don't think of them anymore. I, I had to come back. I couldn't live without you. I had to come back to see you. Just once more. I couldn't live without you, Adam. We'll be married. Promise me we'll be married right away. Right away, darling. Yes, right away. June 20th. Adam and I have been married two months today. We're very happy. Somehow, there's something more than just our love for one another that makes us so close to each other. I can't explain what it is. We've rented a large house, an old one, but it's adorable. And we're planning to... Cecily! Oh, darling! Yes, dear? Come on up here. To the attic, will you? I've stumbled onto something. All right, Adam. Look, 
Look what I found. Back among the rafters. Well, what in the world is it? Well, it's an old mail sack full of mail. What? Yeah, look. Look here. These letters. None of them have ever been opened. Why, Adam. Dozens of letters, all sealed, all stamped and dated. Look. Look, Cecily. Postmarks. They're all the same. January 17, 1889. But how in the world did they get here in this attic? I don't know. I wanted to run a radio aerial out uh, on the roof, and I had to crawl way back in the rafters. It was hidden back there up near the roof. It's evidently been there for years. But how did it get there? Fifty-three years ago. 1889. Now look at these letters. Addressed to people all over the country. Everett Holton, Detroit. Jessica Young, New York. Paul Reimer, Chicago. Mr. and Mrs. F.C. Uh, Halliday, Grady, Pennsylvania. And look, here's one addressed to President Benjamin Harrison from someone in Maine. Wait a minute, Adam. Oh, look. Huh? This letter. Addressed to Miss Cecily Drew of Youngstown. What? The return address, Mr. Aaron Marshall. My father. He wrote this. I know the handwriting. Cecily Drew was my mother's maiden name. Adam. Yes. Cecily Drew. And she lived in Youngstown. My father? Your mother? Uh, open it. Open it. What? I, I said open it. Oh, all right. Oh. What is it? It was my father. Listen. My darling Cecily, I have bad news. I have just learned that someone else has filed for the patent rights to my invention. By some queer trick of fate, another inventor had the same idea as I. Only he has been fortunate enough to get his application for patents into the bureau ahead of me. I fear all my work has been in vain, all my sacrifice useless. I have nothing to offer you now, my dear, but my love. If you still love me, hurry here to marry me. I shall surely never exist if you don't. All my undying love, Aaron. He wrote that your father to my mother. Adam, the train robbery. What? I remember hearing about it on the radio. The train your letter to me was on was robbed. The mail was stolen. And the same thing happened 53 years ago to your mother and my father. Only she believed he failed to come back to her. And he died, never knowing she hadn't read his letter. And his letter has been here, hidden all these long years. Your mother and my father. The Letter from Yesterday, tonight's original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop, originating in the studios of WKY. This is Tom Paxton reminding you to buy United States war bonds and stamps. Dark fantasy comes to you each Friday night from Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>